Georgia's Brass Heroes people, they are still here. Do you know that during the 40s and 50s, whenever Native women had children, they did secret procedures on their bodies so that they couldn't have any more babies? They did that because they were afraid that the population of Native people was growing too rapidly. And so whenever a Native woman had a, a baby, they would secretly do a procedure on their body so they couldn't have any more children. But I want to tell you, regardless of that, we are still here.
stood up together and we told the Ontario government, clean up the river. And we stood together and told the federal government, you have a fiduciary duty to take care of the people of Grass Canal. to speak here this afternoon, to speak after Chief Turtle. I've been reflecting on a film that I watched recently called Yinta. How many of you have heard of it? I saw Yinta earlier this summer, and it's a wonderful film that documents the struggle of the Wet'suwet'en hereditary chiefs and many other First Nations in that area trying to stop the coastal gas pipeline for being built. And this film spans about a decade or more of struggle, of education, of resistance. And it's very clear when you watch this film that the first, uh, that the hereditary chiefs of the Wet'suwet'en and others were willing, are willing to lay down their lives to stop that development from happening. Why? Why? Why were they so willing and continue to be so willing to lay down their very lives to stop a pipeline development? Because of reasons why we're standing here today. Because when we allow industry to have its way, when we allow industry to dictate the terms of development, of environmental stewardship, or otherwise environmental degradation, this is what happens. Things like Grassy Narrows happen. And they go on so much longer than the original disaster or so-called accident which people foretold was going to happen, which people predicted and warned against. It is too late. It is too late not just for the people affected in that moment, but it is too late for the generations afterwards. And here we are decades after Grassy still demanding that mercury be cleaned up, still demanding compensation. We should not be in this situation today. No. And as much as we want everyone to be compensated when there is a harm done to communities, when there is ill health, when there are rates of cancer, of course we want people to get adequate health care. Of course we want them to uh, receive compensation. But what would be even better is if we didn't put people today and future generations in the situation where they needed those things to begin with. So when I go on my bike to the Hummer River, west of us, or when I go to the Don River, east of us, or when I go down south to the lake, I wonder if the water is clean. I wonder if the water is safe for me to wade in, put my hands in, 
What do you guys think? We have every reason to be concerned because the, 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 the wills and the desires of industry always seem to come before the needs and the health and safety of people. But it is such a blessing to have these rivers around us. We're, we're standing on rivers that we don't even realize are under us. We're walking in this territory, on this, in this city, under this concrete. We are walking across rivers, walking across water that sustains us, and we need to remain connected to it. I want to say something about what happens when we fight back. Because we're going to Queen's Park today, and eight years ago, when our family here decided to organize this event and went down to Queen's Park, they did a little demonstration of what happens when we allow industry to run rampant. And they did a little bit of a symbolic kind of dumping of a substance at Queen's Park. And wouldn't you know it, people were very angry at the idea that something was being dumped onto the lawn of Queen's Park. What was in it? Was it dangerous? Was it poisonous? And the police decided they were going to arrest several of the people who were engaged in that demonstration. And I bring that up because just like in the movie Yinta that I watched, just like what happened at Queen's Park eight years ago, every time that Indigenous peoples stand up for treaty rights, stand up on unceded territory for clean air and clean water, get in the face of government and say you're not living up to your commitments and responsibilities, they are criminalized. Yes. Yes. But they are not alone. Because as a black person living on these territories, I also understand and black people understand what it means to be criminalized for speaking up for accountability and justice and health and as a black person on these territories, I just want to say to all First Nations, Métis, and Indigenous, and Inuit people who are fighting back, we understand your struggle. We feel the pain, the fear of criminalization and surveillance, and we must unite together, black and Indigenous communities, for a brighter future. If you've, act, if you've paid attention in the city lately, you probably know that it is becoming harder and harder to do what we're doing here today. To simply gather and make peaceful demands. Demands that are not just for us, but for people who are coming after us. It's becoming harder and harder for us to do that without interference, surveillance, and intimidation. And that is why it's so important that there are so many of us here saying we refuse to be silenced, we refuse to be intimidated, and until we get justice for the people of Grassy Narrows, we're going to keep marching and organizing and fighting. So thank you very much to the organizers of this event. Thank you to Free Grassy. Thank you to the Grassy Nations, uh, Grassy Narrows First Nation. Thank you every single one of you for being here. And I just want to say it's an honor to be asked to speak at an event like this and to be able to share this day with you. Thank you so much. Genocide. And we do not stand genocide!
And we're going to tag Ford and Trudeau as decision makers. Because they're not going to get away with poisoning the river in Grassy Narrows. There is solidarity across this province from sea to sea. And we're going to show it to them on social media. media. I do not see people's phones at. Where are those phones? We are sharing this post. Thanks to everyone who has come out today, and especially to the people of Grassy Narrows for your leadership. And to all the organizations and individuals who have helped to make this happen, who have supported Grassy Narrows for decades, give yourselves a big round of applause. This is what solidarity looks like. Big pink signs 
just up this pathway. Access volunteers will have pink material wrapped around their arms. If you require accessibility support, they are your people. They will have snacks and water. Isn't it important to stay hydrated? Absolutely. Make sure you take some. If you get tired and need assistance, talk to an access volunteer. Or if you require medical assistance, we are also going to have an access van available. It's going to be at the back of the march. There will be additional water and snacks in that van. We will support you there if you need it. Folks, it is going to be hot outside. Wear sunscreen, drink water, check in with folks, and remember to chant. We want to hear lots of chanting. I say what calls you to support Rossi Narrows, what calls you to be in solidarity with one another. As Desmond mentioned here today, it is so incredibly important that we reach out across our movements and build relationships of trust ready to take risks like we are today. So give yourselves a big round of applause for showing up to be that work. So, we had a really fun thing happen last year where a lot of people went rogue with their own chants, which was really fun until there was 10 chants happening at the same time and they weren't the same chants. So this year, we have chant leaders that are gonna have megaphones. They are going to be leading chants. If you want to lead your own chant, don't. Listen to them. They're going to be leading those chants. There's gonna be a balance of chanting and singing, but what we want to be respectful of is that we are going to have a number of indigenous singers and chanters, and when they are performing, we are going to be quiet and listening. Your chant leaders are going to give you that heads up, so pay attention to them. Does that make sense? Yes! All right. Okay, we are getting ready for this march to begin. So if we can have the folks coming up in order that they're going to be marching in, indigenous folks at the front, not folks who walk fast, settlers and allies, we are going to be behind the soundtrack. <laughs>
volunteers. So many organizations, hundreds across the city and the province and the country supporting Grass Pinaros. That's what solidarity looks like. All right, we are going to welcome up Chief Turtle to speak. Can we give Chief Turtle a round warm of applause? Good afternoon. I just want to say thank you again for coming out to support Grass and Arrows. As, you, as I said to her earlier this, today, uh, this has been a long, long fight. And uh, it's, 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 it's been very difficult sometimes. Years ago, when it was in that long, maybe four years ago, I ran the federal election. I represented the, the NDP party for a Kenora riding. I was their candidate. And during that time, we, uh, we uh, because the candidates would support one another, I was invited to go to Thunder Bay. And while I was in Thunder Bay, we were having supper. This uh, elderly gentleman came to me, and he started talking to me. He told me, he said, years ago when they first discovered uh, mercury and grassy arrows, I traveled with the Premier and his team. And as we were flying to grassy arrows, one of the advisors told the Premier or the minister that was uh, responsible for grassy arrows, he told him, Mr. Minister, don't worry about this. This is just an Indian problem. It will go away in two weeks. Now, over 50 years later, we still have that problem. It didn't go away in two weeks. And we're still fighting that to have this thing fixed, to have the river cleaned up, to have our people compensated, to have a, a better environment for the community of Grassinos. We are trying to reclaim what we have lost because of mercury poisoning. And so, you know, we, we, we appreciate your support. We appreciate uh, everything that you've done for us. We, uh, I just want to say thank you. But I also want to express my disappointment. I'm disappointed that the Grand Chief is not here. I'm disappointed that the regional chief is nowhere to be found. I'm, di I'm disappointed that the national chief is not here because we invited her to come and support us. It's wrong. I don't know why they seek these offices and yet they can't even come and stand with us when we're fighting for our communities. You know what I'm discovering? Most of the higher, like the, those people those, that hold those offices, they don't really want to rock the boat anymore. They'd rather uh, go wine and dine with the Prime Minister. They'd rather uh, soft, soft foot. They don't want to speak out the critical issues that our, our people are facing because they're afraid to lose their funding if they speak out really hard. We just don't have the hard-hitting politicians that we used to have long time ago. People that weren't afraid to tell the government, take care of your people. That's right! It's going to be difficult. It's going to get really hard, I believe because of the prediction that they're making that there's going to be a new government. But also, I want to remind you, about eight or nine years ago, this man promised sunny ways after he was elected. Well, where are the sunny ways? about Mr. Sunny Ways himself, Prime Minister Trudeau. He's the one that said it. 
And yet, you know, we're still dealing with uh, this uh, mercury issue. We're still dealing with the uh, Aboriginal issues that need to be addressed. We're still issuing, dealing with uh, with uh, water, boil water advisories. We're still dealing with the inadequate housing. We're still dealing with the inadequate uh, medical facilities. We're still struggling in our communities. Where is that sunny wave? He had eight or nine years to, to provide that. He had eight or nine years to do that for Canada. And here, many of our First Nations are still waiting for their water to be fixed, still waiting for their water plants to function properly. There's still boil water advisories in many of our First Nations communities. And now, here we are, 55 years later, 50 years later, we're still asking both governments, Ontario and Canada, clean up the river, compensate grass emails. It's time to do your job. Mr. Ford, it's time that you did something for Grassy and Arrows. And I also want to, you know, tell the Prime Minister, uh, do something for Grassy and Arrows. Be before you leave your office, it would be a good thing to do for you to uh, uh, answer the calls that Grassy and Arrows has been making and it's time for you to do your job. Do it and do it properly. Thank you for listening to me. Kichimiwech. some of it, but um, the main thing I'm going to talk about is uh, my experience and my, what I, what I feel from the, from the heart. So we go to we go to we go to we go to the people of Sapskusagam are victims of attack, victims of violence, victims of poison, victims of racism. The people have endured so much loss, pain, suffering, suffering from the terrible mistakes of, gov of the governments, Canada and Ontario. The mistake that has cost us our lives, our health, our culture, and our way of life. As Chief Sir Turtle said that in the early 1960s, we were, we were forced to relocate from our original lands 
our beautiful home. The old reserve. This move was dev devastating to the people because the connection we had to the land was disconnected. It was broken. Our hunting, our trapping, our fishing, and our families delicate balance that they had with nature was disrupted. And again in, in the 70s, the river our people relied on for sustenance for thousands of years was contaminated by mercury. The mercury poisoned our fish, our animals, and poisoned our people. This was a very terrible thing, a terrible blow to our people that they have to endure. Because once we are poisoned, there is no cure. As I stand here, I suffer from mercury poisoning. I feel it, but I try to live with it. On top of all this, in the 80s, Ontario started clear-cutting our forests. It is enough for people to, with, this, with these many attacks on our way of life, our people, it is enough for us to give up, but we didn't. In spite of all these attacks, somehow our young people stood up and started fighting back. They showed us the people of Shabshkusyogang are strong. We will not give. We will never give up. When I go back to the old settlement, our old community, our old, our homeland, the place where I remember peace, where I was happy, where I was healthy, those days of my childhood. When I go there, I can still picture the people living there. I could feel the spirits that are there still. One time I sat by my dad's old cabin for a long time and I closed my eyes and thought about my, our ancestors who lived and settled there and wondered how they got there and how they picked the space, the spot to live. I thought about the journey they had to get here. As I sat there, I started to understand. It was the faith and connection they had to the Creator and to the land. They were guided here by the spirits. They knew that someday we would be here and we will survive and we must survive and we must leave something for our future generations. This fight is not for ourselves, it is for the future of Anishinaabe people across Turtle Island. 
we too have faith in the Creator and our land. We too seek guidance from the spirits and we will not give up until we get justice. Jason and Mike to sing a song that came to me. Talks about our ancestors and how they placed their faith in Kijamanitu to guide them and to help, help them. And today, this is a prayer to all of us that are here. Miigwechi. back on October 21st. Be quiet. All right, we're going to call up Hassan to do a call to action. And while Hassan is doing that, we're welcoming youth from Grassy to stand behind here. Darren's got a request that we put a fist up towards Queen's Park, which we should do. Yeah, and the crowd can do it also. I think that would be wonderful. Thank you. Again, that we are gathered here today on the territories of the Mississaugas of the, free, of the Credit, lands that have been defended for centuries by the Haudenosaunee people and the Wendat nations. These lands are also under a treaty called the Turo Wampum. And what the Turo Wampum says is that there are two canoes one for indigenous people and one for settlers and migrants and those who are non indigenous. And that they must remain separate and move together. So I speak now to people who are in our canoe, to the non-indigenous people here. And I want to remind you of the words that Robert said, and I want you to say them with me. Robert said, we will not give up. I want you to think deep in your heart. Think about what it is that inspires you and that drives you, and from that place say the words, we will not. For Chrissy told us, she came here as a teenager and now she's a grandmother and Chrissy did not give up. So we, for over half a century, the people of Grassi Narrows have stood up and against this intersection of colonial violence and they have said we will not give up. So what do you say? When the world's largest paper mill company tried to come into Grassi Narrows and log those trees, Grassi Narrows said we will not give up. So what do we say? When Grassi Narrows has stood up against Mining on its territories from the world's largest gold companies, Grassi Nero said, we will not give up. So what do we say? We Outside of Queen's Park, to say to Ford that Grassi is not alone and the rest of us will not give up. Say it with me, we will not. I want you to stand up. I want you to remember that what we are doing here today is making a commitment. That these are not just words that we are saying aloud, but that this is a promise and a pledge that we are doing. So make this pledge with me. Say it with me. We will. It has happened just half a century ago. It is happening today. Today, a paper mill is putting methyl mercury, which is the most poisonous form of mercury, into Grassi's River. And that is why people are falling sick. And so when we are being asked to do is to not give up. So say it with me, we will not give up today. We are here sending a message to Ford and to Trudeau and to every politician in this country that this community of 1,600 people does not stand alone. But there are thousands of us that march with Grassi because we will not give up. Say these words, 
with me, he said, we will win. So say, we! And it is our task to stand in defense of indigenous self-determination. So one last time, as loud as you can say, say, we! Mike, for grassy folks only, if there are folks from grassy that would like to speak, please come on up. We're gonna wait for a minute. Let's, let's give some applause and encouragement for folks. Bonjour everyone, I'm, I'm Steve Foster Sr.'s grandson and uh, my name is Steve, I'm Junior. Um, I come from Grassy Narrows and uh, you know, all I can say is you know, I, I lived with you know, Mercury for the rest of my life, you know, at the age of two I had seizures, you know, from age two to age eight. You know, and that, that's really sad, you know, and my, my grandfather, Steve, you know, always took me to these, you know, these places, you know, where they were cutting down the trees. I witnessed it myself, you know, to see them cutting down trees, you know, they, they you know, they, they used it, you know, they said that, uh, you know, they'll provide jobs and stuff, you know, but, you know, it's not true. They don't realize what they're doing. They're destroying future life. You know, and you know, they they don't understand that, you know, they're they're destroying life of basically uh you know, and what happens is when they cut trees down, it releases mercury, you know, and you know, hearing about you know, I didn't understand about mercury until I was the age of twelve. I finally finally understand, you know, I wasn't I was I was pretty pretty sick, you know, and to this day I watch future generations struggle with these symptoms, you know, and it's it's a sad thing. I have to see as, you know, Mercury doesn't die. It lives in people. It's just gonna keep going on and on, which, you know, we're gonna keep fighting from generation after generation. The government's not gonna stop hearing from us until we get our word, how we get our fight. <laughs> You know, what I see here is, you know, we're all, we're all a connection. We're all family. You know, we all fight for, you know, what we want right. What I see here is, you know, the government don't care. You know, if they care, they say promises. They say, let's make grass, let's make Canada green. Leaving mercury in the water isn't a green thing. Promises, they're breaking promises with people. They don't understand they're destroying future lives. They don't understand that, you know, that mercury is an environmental issue, you know, and, you know, I watch, um, you know, my grandpa said, you know, continue my legacy, don't give up, you know, and I, I'll, I will, I won't never give up. I'll keep fighting on cow. No, all I can say is, you know, Mr. Red is not going to get a kind word from us. We're going to keep fighting. And, you know, as us young ones, we're going to give him hell of a fight. <laughs> and, you know, I fight. I would fight for anyone because, you know, life is life. Water is life, you know. And, you know, um, these are the things that, you know, what my grandpa said. My grandpa, Robert, you know, he said, um... On all the words he said really impacted me, you know, because that's what we have to struggle with every day. We have to go home to this. But you know. to see you know we would like to get an answer but you know the way I see it with the government is you know they're just passing the word around they're just they're not you know they keep switching that's their tactic they don't stick to one because they're scared you know they're scared of the people because we're all united that's what they fear is because you know we're the ones that give them the power without us they won't be where they are we had that trust in them but they're not giving us, you know, they're not giving us that compensation. They're not giving us, you know, that anything what we ask for. They're just tossing us aside like we're nothing. Yay! You know, and they don't understand like what I said with Mercury. I have to live with it. All of us have to live with it from Grassy, you know. That's a, that's a hard thing to live with. 
you know, and you know that's uh, I don't know. Um, it, it's it's just sad. That's all I can say. You know, it's 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 nothing. There's nothing no positives about it. You know, they don't understand that um, this passing the you know passing it around. Like what I said, they the they made promises. They're not following them. Right. The battle until we get what we want. Thank you. I'm 20 years old and I've actually been here four years ago. That was actually my first time ever getting on a truck and saying the speech. Um, and and today I come back. I come back here because because after what I've learned that they're still dumping poison into our waters. And honestly, that makes me sad to hear because of, because I have nieces and nephews that are not even like 10 years old yet. And I don't want them. I don't want them to have to grow up knowing that that there's poison in our waters. And and the fact that we've been ignored for so long. Honestly, honestly, they probably they probably get they probably the government probably likes to see us struggle. Yes. Today we're here to fight. <laughs> and we will not be ignored until we get a change. Thank you. Okay, right? Incredible speakers. All right, we're going to play a song that the Grassy, that some youth from Grassy actually sang. Because we, it's so hard to get up here, and there's so many youth who couldn't be here. So we're going to play that song so we get to have their voices here with us. Um, and if there's any folks from Grassy, doesn't have to be you, who would like to come up and speak, please do so while we have that song playing and we'll get you lined up here. Thank you. Girls, also a, a grandmother. Um, first of all, I want to acknowledge uh, everybody that's here that supports our community, Grassy Narrows. But I also want to acknowledge our elders that traveled from our community to be here. And, uh, and I also want to acknowledge the youth that continue to fight our fight. Um, as Chrissy, Chrissy mentioned earlier, when she talked about losing her nieces, those were my, my granddaughters, the 11-year-old and 18-year-old. <clears throat> and they, they came to these river runs, and uh, my 18-year-old granddaughter was a youth ambassador that that was always here fighting for justice. And today I'm here to acknowledge, um, you know, our youth, our children and youth, because it's their future. And also, um, <clears throat> I also want to acknowledge uh, um, our, our band members, our elders that fought for this a long time ago. Uh, one, of the, one of the people uh, from our community Tommy Kizik, he's an elder, and he started. The, they started the fight. Um, Tommy Kizik, um, Steve Fobster, Andy Kiwaitin, um, a lot of those older guys. Um, I know Tommy barely gets around now. I wish he could have been here to stand here and tell you guys about the fight that they started a long time ago. But I also want to acknowledge, you know, the people that that continue to fight this fight for us, you know, Judy De Silva and uh, everybody else that, that helped her. But part of the reason why I wanted to, the chance to, to address the people was, um, I work as a child and family advocate of my community. Um, so our program started in 2019 and, and during the the, the years of operation, I've seen the impacts of what it's doing to our children and also our families, our parents. And one of the things that um, I've noticed is that like a lot of our children have, uh, like have been diagnosed with autism, ADHD, 
like all those things and we just don't have an education system to accommodate those special needs and that's one thing we need to fight for because it's their future. We need a specialized unit where we want to make our youth stronger, we want to make our children strong and in that case we need a really strong education system that's gonna, that's gonna, a lot of our children are falling through the, because of that. And uh, it, it made me feel sad when two parents came to me. There's no help for my child they, because in the school system that it's, it's not, um, the teachers are not trained to, um, to educate children in that way that, ha that, that have those special needs. So that's going to be another fight that we're going to have on our hands is to to fight where we can get a good education for our children. You know, we say our future, and I see people caring, every child matters. Well, we need to focus on that, is to have a really, really good education system for our children because we want to make them strong. We want them educated because one of these days, I want them to be in my footsteps and I want them to take care of me. So that's, that's uh, why I wanted to come up and speak is for those children that are battling disabilities. We have a lot of our children that, that do have disabilities and that require that specialized help. So I am pleading with everybody to support us in that area and also our leadership to push for that, you know, where our children can be educated, that everybody deserves, you know, an education. So with that, you know, I'm a grandmother, I say miigwech for listening. Thank you, Mariah. All right, we are gonna have our final speaker, Cody, who's gonna close us out. Uh, so just wanna remind everybody, well, first, thank you so much for coming and for staying. Give yourselves a big round of applause. This is an incredible show of solidarity today. Um, go to freegrassy.net, share the demands on social media, continue organizing in your communities and continue spreading the word through the places that you build power in, your workplaces, your friend groups, your family. So big round of applause for Cody, who's gonna close us out. I'm Petu Ashte, you happy? Hello, my beautiful relatives. Um, I shake your hand with a good heart. Um, I'm Cody Looking Horse, and I'm 26 years old from the Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe of South Dakota. I'm also uh, from the Mohawk Haudenosaunee Tribe. And I just want to say, from the beginning, reservations were not made for us. They were temporary. They were made to isolate us, make us weak. And that's what it's doing right now to this day. They're poisoning our water on purpose. They're doing a lot of these things, these mercuries. They knew what they were doing. They knew that they was gonna make us sick, but they did not bat an eye. And we're dealing with the consequences today of the government, the lack of governance of our waterways on Pond Mother Earth. It is not right. Shame. Shame. Shame on them for not batting an eye for our missing and murdered indigenous women and men. Shame on them for not loving our Mother Earth the way that she should be. Yeah. Our Mother Earth has a fever and that's causing our young ones to have a fever. What about our next seven generations from time, from now? I stand here representing my forefathers that were not invited on stages. They were not invited to these things that, um, to get recognized. And it's an honor to be here and be recognized by the people and the Oyate of our tribe and our people of this land. And um, Wopi La Tonka. I just want to say it's a great honor to be gifted this sash as a water walker for Judy Silva and all the rest of the Grassy Narrows team for all the work that they've done. And I honor them and give them a round of applause for the beautiful day. I want to sing them a prayer song, a Wopila song, a thank you song for today, for everything that they've done and all the work that they've done in the 
um, hours and hours they've traveled here just to spread awareness about what's happening to their water. <clears throat> Mother, Father, you made me indigenous. You made me indigenous person. All over the world, being indigenous is hard. Being Lakota is hard. Being Ojibwe is hard. But I will take courage and stand for the people. That song was made hundreds of years ago, and today we still fight. We still stand, and we're still here. We're sovereign, we're indigenous, we're warriors. Aho Madakya Sing. Welcome to Lazanto for the beautiful day and the beautiful faces and the beautiful people. Aho. Out. It was so special to have so many people here today. We had almost fi over 5,000 people here at the height of the march, so that is humongous. Everyone should be really proud of that. Thank you so much for coming and we will see you at the next River Run and continue organizing for Grassy in every single place that you're in. Woo! Thank you.